Hey guys, Tim here. <clears throat> so just doing a little bit of a build log of this editing case we've been doing. Uh, I'm not going to do as an in-depth of a build as I have in some of the other videos just because it is just an, you know, an ATX board with an ATX case. There's, you know, not a ton of things special about it, but I just thought I'd do, you know, kind of a a little build log of, you know, what I'm doing and you know, kind of reiterate aiding the choices that I've made. So here is, we already have the Gigabyte board in there. And here is the AMD chip. And of course you gotta be really careful of the the bottom there. And you just always want to find the corner that is keyed and match it with the corner that has the keying. And then you just firmly press down and lock that back into place. I've already put the back plate uh, on the board for the CPU cooler and I'm actually reading the instructions which <clears throat> on CPU coolers I would suggest you always do because I don't know what kind of people would uh, install a CPU cooler wrong um, not me obviously but it's an easy way honestly all kidding aside, it's an easy way to completely fry your system. So, <clears throat> well, I guess not your whole system, but if you overheat your CPU, you may not do critical permanent damage to it, but you will damage it. No matter what anybody says, you push a CPU past 100 degrees Celsius, you are eventually going to damage the silicon of that chip. So, and you may not notice it right away, but you know, you may all of a sudden have. A machine that blue screens every once in a while and you you know all oh, that damn Windows or that damn Linux well maybe it's your PC so here we have the water block and the radiator and <clears throat> I normally wouldn't do it this way but because I am gonna I am trying to do kind of a silent build or a you know noise optimized is what I've been calling it I'm actually going to mount the radiator first um, and mount the fan to the the back of the radiator so that it's in a push configuration rather than a pull configuration and honestly all that does is get the fan a little further away from where anybody's ears are going to be so I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will be back there's the retention clip by the way so uh, the retention clip just goes on this is actually a little bit nicer design than I'm used to, but it's going to take a little planning to make sure I get it at the angle I want. But so basically you lock it on and then there's a tension clip ring to lock that in. I'm going to do that off camera just because I want to make sure that uh, I get the alignment <laughs> OCD. So I want to make sure I get the alignment of the Corsair logo the direction I want it going. So we'll be back in a minute guys and I'll wrap up for this build vlog. Okay guys. We're back and better than ever. So, <clears throat> from my previous comments, you're thinking, but Tim, you told us you were going to put the fan on the outs or on the inside of the case, not the outside. That was right up until I spent 20 minutes looking for screws that apparently I don't have. Um, so, I had to use the screws that came with the stock configuration, which are long screws. So, you have to put the fan on the inside. I did replace the 120 that came with the case um, just because this is a little bit more silent optimized fan even though they're almost exactly the same fan the blades are um, have no texture and it's uh, a little bit oilier I don't know it just it's a it's a slicker quieter fan so I could always put this in the front if I wanted to but in this case uh, I'm just going to give it to the person and they can decide if they want to put it in or not. If the GPU doesn't get enough cooling, um, then they can stick it in, but I don't think that's going to be a problem in this case at all. RAM is the next thing. So I did want to mention one thing. I've done an unboxing of these. You want to be really careful when you install them not to push down from the heat fins. You want to try to push down from the corners if at all possible or hold it by the heat spreader and not press in but just use that to help seat it so <clears throat> whenever you're installing just two chips you always want to find 
uh, which slot is which and slot one is the gray uh, slot three is the gray so one and two and then three and four so the grays are for the first set of two you always want to make sure you're getting them in the right way so I am gonna to have to apply some pressure so you, you just want to do it from the outside and of course if I was smart I would have done the inside one first because now it's gonna make it harder to put it in but meh not like it's that much harder so just slide them down and once you get it in supply pressure to the outsides using I'm just basically I'm just thrashing my thumbs but it's better than thrashing a stick of RAM so as you can tell this case is looking pretty good right up until I'm gonna stick a gigabyte wind force card in here that's got a blue PCB but that aside you're not gonna be able to see in this case anyways however I will say uh, the gigabyte boards look the ones that are like kinda like silver on black are some of the best looking boards in my opinion I like the minimalist look um, God, the new I'm so I'm a diehard Asus fan. You guys all know that if you watch my channel, I buy almost exclusively Asus motherboards. Uh, right up until they made them gold. What the hell, Asus? I know there's some people out there that like gold, but what the hell, Asus? I can't buy any of your boards for the Z87s. So we actually have a Z87 uh, build coming up with an EVGA board. That's a my that's a uh, micro ITX board, so or mini ITX whatever, M ITX, uh, and that little guy looks slick. So that build is also coming after this build because obviously this build is for somebody else, and I got to get that done before I get my build done. And is there anything else? I don't think so. I think that's where we're gonna wrap this one up. Really, the only thing left to do, you know, power supply, video card, both of those don't take very long uh, a hard drive again yeah uh, there's gonna be a CD-ROM in this uh, case uh, DVD burner and again you know what's that five minutes to throw it in and cable it up right so I'll probably spend the majority amount of my time with what's left with this build with the cable management just trying to make it look clean um, like I said this isn't a show PC I'm not gonna spend 20 hours you know, sleeving and, you know, the sleeving in this case is actually pretty good to begin with. Uh, and the sleeving on the power supply I bought is also pretty good. But I don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, with cable management. I just want it to look neat and professional. Uh, but this isn't for me, so I can, I, I have the ability to kind of turn on and off my OCD. Uh, in my cases, I tend to be extremely OCD about where the cables are, not necessarily what they look like. Uh, I just want best airflow in my cases, so I tend to tweak a little bit. This case is going to have so much just native airflow. You can see how much room there is in this case. We didn't, you know, it's massive. So, and it's a great little case for uh, 90 bucks. So definitely check out the 330R, guys. Uh, there's a, I just did an unboxing of it the other day, uh, along with the motherboard, the RAM, the CPU, and the the cooler. So. I'll link all of those in this video. Next time, we'll probably wrap up this build. Because uh, like I said, there's only a few things left to do and then some cable management, which uh, obviously I'm going to do off camera because A, I suck at it, and B, you guys do not want to watch me cable manage. Uh, I'll show you what I do when I'm done, but this is Tim for Timmy Tech TV. Subscribe. Uh, maybe I won't ramble on in the next build log, but eh. Maybe I will. See you guys next time.